Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to kind of get you started on your gear problem, on your gear assignment. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating two gears and a backplate in order to mount both of those gears together. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some terminology in regard to what we're going to be doing. We're going to look at our assignment sheet and uh, take a look at some of the values on that sheet and how to determine them. Uh, we're going to have some given values and all the other values, uh, very similar to our thread of fastener design. We're going to make a, we're going to determine what those values are dependent upon what was given to us for the assignment. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating uh, two different gears. Uh, these gears go together as pairs. We design them as a pair so that they fit uh, you know, reasonably well within the pair. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this is kind of a compilation of some work and some uh, theory that I've uh, uh, researched. And I put together a fairly simple design for these gears. Although when we get to the sketching, it may not look so simple at first, but then after a while, once you get into sketching of this thing, it actually does start to make sense, and it comes, and it comes together pretty well. So it isn't, uh, it isn't a, a um, you know, there, there's a lot of math that goes into uh, actually producing a very good gear design, a spur gear design like this, and of course math gets much more complicated when you go into hyploid gears and helical gears and some other gears like that, but. This assignment is just to give you started if you're to actually uh, make gears like this, a uh, gear set like this, like what we're going to be designing, I think you'll find it to be a relatively decent uh, set of gears and it will, it will perform for you. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at our, uh, our ultimate assembly here and take a look at some of the elements that are associated with the assembly. We have a couple sketch uh, geometry, we have some sketch geometry that's actually showing here. And in that sketch geometry, uh, we're going to, um, let me move some of this out of the way a little bit. Let's actually move that one out of the way. And with this sketch geometry, what I'd like to do is uh, having it show. So I'm going to show you what some of, the, some of the sketch geometry actually does, especially the pressure line that we're going to be drawing and how that relates ultimately to how our uh, gear teeth actually mesh. So I'm going to take my gear mate, I'm going to unsuppress that and put that back into play so you can see uh, the interaction of the gears. There's a couple things that we can do. We can do physical interaction with the gears or we can do, uh, we can establish a gear mate. Uh, physical interaction or the physical dynamics uh, in regard to the gears is actually kind of fun to see because it actually shows you some of the slack, whereas the, the gear mate doesn't show any slack at all. It just puts in um, you know that ratio that you need to put in there, which is our gear ratio. And uh, what that means is that for every revolution of this, I have a gear ratio of two and a half. For every revolution of the gear wheel, or the wheel gear, there's going to be two and a half revolutions of the smaller gear. You can actually see that when you go around. So if we were to take uh, perhaps and follow this, you know, that sketch geometry, when that line is vertical one more time, you'll notice that the, this line over here will actually go around and come back to its origin uh, two and a half times. So that's what this gear ratio actually means. And you can do physical dynamics. If we were to suppress that gear mate and go into physical dynamics, we can do that too. That's another way of demonstrating that the gears actually, uh, you, know, you know, mesh with each other and transfer the power from one gear to the other. So what you do is you go to move components. First thing you want to do is go to physical detection or collision detection and see you want to get into a situation here where you want to make sure that none of the components are actually hitting each other. So you notice that on the gear over here, the gear teeth over here, that one's blue. And if you move that just a little bit more, then some of these other elements turn blue and you want to get to the point where none of them turn blue anymore. And that means you're going to be right in the middle or right in a situation where none of the gear teeth are going to be touching. And then you can go into physical dynamics. And when you do that, then you can move the two gear teeth around. And if you look really closely at the pink gears on the top and the blue gears on the bottom, if there is a little bit of slack if I move that back and forth. That is uh, a little bit uh, closer, more closely resembles what the actual physical interaction is going to be between the two gears. And you can see how that works. So let's talk about theory a little bit. What we're going to be drawing with our gear design here is uh, a lot of sketch geometry before we actually begin to draw the, the, you know, the profile of the tooth. There's going to be two things we're going to be drawing with our gears uh, in regard to the sketch geometry we're going to put in initially. We're going to draw the base of the gear, which is going to be down here, and then we're going to draw the gear tooth. We're actually going to sketch that all at the same time, but we're going to model the base of the gear as one feature, and then as a second feature, we're going to be modeling the tooth. 
And with that tooth, we're going to do a, a circular pattern once we get all done with that in order to get that tooth around the outside of the, the base of the gear. But part of that sketch geometry they're going to be drawing is going to be this line here, and I want you to keep an eye on this line as we move this around. I'm going to go back to, and uh, unsuppress the gear, mate. A little bit easier to control that way, but look at this line. This is called the pressure line. This pressure line is going to have a very specific value to it, a very specific angle. It's going to be at 20 degrees to the horizontal down here, and the desire with this pressure line is when this tooth comes in and begins to interact, when it's a red or pinkish colored tooth, comes in and interacts with the blue tooth down here, it's going to transfer motion to that tooth. And if we look at that a little bit more uh, on, uh, you know, straight on like that, and the teeth aren't really touching, we can probably unsuppress that, maybe get that a little bit closer to maybe better represent represent that. If you think of a line, this is the pressure line, it comes at a very specific point. That point is uh, what I call the pitch point. Divides the top of the tooth, the curve in the top of the tooth, and uh, the curve in the bottom of the tooth. They're two different curve uh, sizes, but they're you know, of similar shape. And the curve size is going to be a little bit different between the top teeth and the bottom teeth. The top teeth being on the pinion gear and the bottom teeth being on the, on the gear wheel. But if you think of this pressure line, if you think about another line that might be parallel to that as at the point of intersection down here when this tooth first begins to interact with that tooth down here, that pressure line uh, is, uh, indicates or represents uh, a 90 degree angle to uh, you know, the, the curvature of uh, that tooth face. So what you want to do in order to have a decent transfer of power, a decent transfer of motion or force from one tooth to another, you want these teeth to interact at about a 90 degree angle. So if you think about this pressure line uh, being parallel over here, as this tooth moves through that pressure line and uh, the 90 degree angle that is associated with that to uh, the edge of that tooth, should be interacting with the tooth below that on the gear wheel, on the wheel gear, at a 90 degree angle too, until this tooth begins to leave. And then this tooth begins to pick up uh, you know, the very same uh, function down here. So when this tooth is beginning to leave, when it's uh, already transferred its, uh, its uh, force, its power, its motion, you want this tooth to be able to leave that tooth cavity between these two teeth down here in the wheel gear without any resistance at all. What you want is contact down here with the next tooth. It's going to contact that tooth. This tooth over here leaves that tooth without any additional uh, contact or interaction. So essentially, you only have about maybe two teeth touching at any one time between the pinion gear and the wheel, or the pinion, yeah, the pinion gear and the wheel gear, or the gear wheel, as it's called. So that's a little bit of the some of the sketch geometry that you see here, and a little bit of the theory involved with that. In our next video, we're going to begin to sketch out our pinion gear. Then we'll talk about the gear wheel after that, and we'll put everything together into an assembly and show you how that works. And then ultimately, at the end of the series, I'll show you some of the things you can do to your gears in order to embellish the design a little bit and make it look a little bit more closely or have it more closely resemble that of a real gear.